Who thinks it's a good thing for a monster game power? I just, I just, I'm just pausing, man. Because even though, yes, I understand the Juice Crew and the things they do. Shout out to Fisherman, man. I understand a lot of the things the Juice Crew does, man. A lot of things they do. I understand it, man. Trust me, I understand it. But this is Game of Thrones, man. This isn't fucking checkers, man. Black folk play checkers, man. This is Game of Thrones out here, man. This ain't checkers, man. You just jump and then they jump and then they jump and this is it. You gotta be you got you gotta know what you asking for, man. Huh? You gotta know what you asking for. A dude stole a hundred dollars from me one time and then ducked me for like a week. I'm talking about went from being up under me to ducking me, stole a hundred dollars from me while I was asleep. Went from being up under me to ducking me for a week. I finally saw him. Before I could even ask for it, shit was up. Shit just went up. One thing led to another. I I ended up getting jumped. Lost vision in my right eye. Over fucking hundred dollars. If I had that shit to do over again, I would have just cut him off. I'd have just cut that dude off. I would have just cut that dude off instead of going to look for him over hundred dollars. I would have just cut his ass off and looked looked at it as okay, that's a hundred dollars to get you to, to find a snake. That's a hundred dollars. I paid a hundred dollars to, to find a snake. In the grass. You never know how these things are gonna turn out. How many of y'all thought y'all was going to be giving your hard-earned tax dollars to Ukraine? In 2020, when they was talking about Ukraine, Russia going to Ukraine, and then 2021, they were talking about Russia going to attack Ukraine. In 2022, they are talking about Russia going to attack Ukraine. How many of these people supporting that shit knew that you was going to give your fucking heart? It was going to, you was going to pay for that shit. You was going to be the one paying for that fucking war over there. Everybody was pro-Ukraine. You saw Ukraine flag. I still see Ukrainian flags everywhere. And it's like, yo. I'm pausing on Israel because... I see son supporting it. Moving in parts one through four, the Jewish people are in fact Ukrainians from an area formerly called Khazaria, as attested by their own Jewish historians, scholars, and rabbis. The Palestinians, on the other hand, have a different story. Historians state that when Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD, that Rome allowed a small segment of Hebrews to remain, namely servants and farmers, besides the ones captured and the ones who fled into Africa and Arabia. These peoples would eventually incur some mixing with other groups who conquered Palestine, in particular the Ottoman Turks. To this day, the groups of people who occupy Palestine is a combination of the descendants of Ottomans and the original Hebrews, who are labeled as Afro-Palestinians.
The African presence is still visible in Israel today. There are thousands of African Palestinians who live in Israel with deep roots to the land, whose ancestors date back for centuries. I met with Ali Jadah, tour guide, and the informal mayor of the African Palestinians in Old Jerusalem. I asked him about his life and relations between the Afro-Arabs and the Jews. Well, life for him, I think it's the hell. I'm one of those people who had experienced that. To be Palestinian, that's a big problem. But to be a black Palestinian, I'm quite convinced it will be the hell. Because uh, as a black Palestinian, I am uh, double oppressed. Double oppressed by the Israelis. In what way? In what way? I will explain. First of all, they first of all they oppress me as a Palestinian. You see. Uh, secondly, they oppress me because of my color. Whenever I go around in the Israeli side, they call me Kushi. Kushi means nigger. Kushi means nigger. So, in Israel, the land of God, people who are the brothers of the Arabs, two brothers, you are called nigger as I am called nigger in America? Uh, let's say on the surface, uh, this is what they say, that this is the land of God and uh, we are cousins and there should be total equality. But once you come to the practice, when you come on ground, you will find that there is a lot of discrimination and there is a real divorce, a real divorce uh, between what they say and what they exercise. Blacks and whites who watch the show say, so why stay? Why stay when you are called nigger every day? Why stay? The same way you stay in America and you complain about being called nigger every day. Both of y'all lying. This dude is more oppressed by the Arabs. The Arabs oppressed this guy more than the Israelis. Press one. Shout out to Platinum Pig kicking off the $5 challenge. Salute, man. The Arabs oppressed, the Arabs oppressed this guy more than the Jews do. Arabs oppress this guy more than the Jews do. When you were denied your rights? On the contrary. Uh, they never, they, the more they humiliate me, the more they oppress me, the more I stick to my land. Because this is my land. I'm so rooted. We are deeply rooted as Africans, as Palestinian Africans in this land. And we know pretty well that our ancestors, I'm talking about thousands and thousands of years, we had been here in this country, but they were spread away, taken to Africa, from Africa to the United States. <laughs> our ancestors, I'm talking about thousands and thousands of years, we had been here in this country, but they were spread away, taken to Africa, from Africa to the United States, 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 from Africa to the United States. I am Sara Mahdi Hill Ben Yehuda. Sara means minister. My title in the community, my role is minister. My portfolio is that of information. I'm charged to collect, to analyze, and then to disseminate information about the Hebrew Israelites here in uh, Israel, about our particular uh, history as a community and our history as a people uh, connecting back to this land. Uh, we consider Israel to be Northeast Africa. We are living here in the southern portion of Israel in what is known as the Southern Judean Mountains. And uh, of course, we have to make this clear that, that Israel uh, predates any uh, Palestinian uh, connections here to this land. When you look at the name of Palestine, it was the name. Yeah, these, these sons are crazy. This is all suedo science and bullshit. These son people are fucking crazy. None of them are scientists. None of them are archaeologists. All these niggas learn this shit in prison. Press one. The name that the Romans gave to the land formerly known as Judea. Now, I didn't say Jewish or uh, Judaism but Judea. So the Judeans were the people that actually lived in this portion of this land prior to the uh, it being named Palestine by the Romans. So this is what we consider to be Northeast Africa. We are sitting on the African tectonic plate. There are African species of birds and animals. And, and 
You hear this nigga? The fuck is he talking about African species of birds and animals? The, the African tectonic plate. The fuck you niggas wouldn't know it was a tectonic plate under there if it wasn't for white people. Press one. If it wasn't for white people, niggas wouldn't know how to fuck why it rains. If it wasn't for white people, niggas wouldn't know why it rains. They wouldn't understand cumulus clouds and different type of... They wouldn't know none of that shit. Talking about we... Israel sitting on the African tectonic. The fuck are you talking about? Goddamn sun word. You sun turd. <laughs> Let me give you some more of that, man. Let me punish y'all some more, man. Take the five dollar challenge. And plants that you'll find all throughout this region. Why I took you here is that I want to show you that the country called Israel is sitting on the African tectonic plate. Now we're gonna go. Israel sitting on the African tectonic plate. <laughs> what the fuck does that have to do with anything? And let's see if that's true. The African plate, also known as the Nubian plate, is a major tectonic plate that includes much of the continent of Africa. <laughs> and what the fuck does that mean, though? The fuck does that mean? Israel sits on the African tectonic. They get the only reason it's called Africa is because a white man named it Africa. And the only reason you know about tectonic plates because white people discovered that shit. Niggas would have never found out about no tectonic plates. Niggas would have never named the whole goddamn continent one thing. Niggas would have named never named the whole continent one thing. Africa is a fucking white man word. That's what the white man call y'all. <laughs> Over here, and I'm going to show you where Israel sits on the African tectonic plate, which means that Israel is northeast Africa. Now, when we look at this map, this is the this is the Sinai. So all Africa is is what the white man called it. The white man said, "All right, all that's Africa." <laughs> When they was carving up the world, they said, okay, that's Africa down there. That's North America. That's South America. That's Europe. The colonial powers just named that shit. They carved that shit up. That, that shit wasn't called Africa back in the fucking... <laughs> in the goddamn days, whatever the fuck, the biblical days. That shit wasn't called Africa back then. And millions of groups of people intermingled and came and went and all types of shit. Some men see the world in such a linear way, man. Press one. We see the world in a linear. We see the world linearly as if, like, everything just happened one after another. Everything's real neat. In the sun man's view of the world, everything's real neat and concise, man. Okay. This is the Red Sea. This is Egypt. This is the Sinai. This is Israel. All right. This is Saudi Arabia over here. Now, if you see this in Hebrew, it says Haluak Africani, the African plate. Here it is right here. Israel is sitting right here. Israel is sitting on the Haluak Africani, which means that Israel is Northeast Africa. I want to say I'm sorry that my English is not so good, but. I will try, you know, to explain or to, to teach the people, the people that don't know that we are here in this land before uh, maybe, maybe more in, 
2004, in this area, uh, in Sinai Desert. It's, uh, it's not far from here. It's near the Jordan-Israeli border. There is our land, my land, my grandfather's land. So, uh, so before, you know, before maybe, before the, the state of Israel, the border of this Israel of Palestine is not in this in this border today it's very near before it's el arish in arish in egypt today there is the border of this the holy the holy land this is the religion thing so many people they don't know that uh, the black people here in this land it's it's not press one of you think this sun word wants to live over there in palestine without them israelis there Press one of you think this somewhere wants to live over in the Middle East with a bunch of Arabs and no and no white people around. Press one if you think this sun word wants to live in the Middle East with a bunch of Arabs and no white people around. But, uh, for the last hundred years, something like this is more than uh, a thousand of years. From Africa, he from Africa. Ah, Saba, and I'm from Esser the Road. Esser the Road. Ten generations here. Kobe, he is Israel. He is Palestine. He is. Shout out to my man Ray Wall, man. He says, "What you talking about, Ah? You know everything comes from the mother Africa." White man stole all our science. Yeah, man, these scientists right here, man. These brothers is, is much different than the sun men in America. These brothers is completely different than sun men you see in America. There's nothing, there's no similarities, man. These brothers is different, man. They not on the same bullshit that sun men in America is on, huh? Who believes that? The four Palestinians before the Turkish Empire. His people was here. The original people here it was black. I know about the hostel of Bini Hilal. Uh, I know about the Zir Salem uh, history. And you niggas was picking cotton and shit and working on date farms and diving for fucking pearls. You niggas was pearl divers and fucking eunuchs and shit. Everybody know this? Uh, most of the, the Bedouin here, most of them, they come from the Arab Gulf. Uh, they know. They, they can know they, they're not original here. They know that we are the original uh, the, people here in this land. The Israeli author Shlomo Sand in his book, The Invention of the Jewish People, between the pages of 184, 188, he goes into great depth talking about the early Zionist thinkers like Baird Bodokov and even David Ben-Gurion. Uh, he quotes David Ben-Gurion and Ben Svi, Yitzhak Ben Svi, talking about the fact that the early Judean peasants were actually the foundation of what the, uh, what they encountered when they came into this land. This is a book they wrote 30 years prior to the Declaration of Israel's Independence. And they recognized that the Fellahim, this peasant class, were actually those that had remained here. So the sons was peasants. <laughs> you son words that was there was peasants. And a, and a people with a greater culture and a stronger military might came and took the land, and now it's theirs. And that's the way the fucking world works, man. That's the way the hood works. You ever seen the fucking wire? Niggas love the wire. Niggas love the wire. The wire, the wire, the wire. Okay, the wire, motherfucker. Avon and Marlo and Omar. That's the same rules in the world, you fucking son turd. Press one here that had converted perhaps to islam that converted perhaps to christianity depending on the ruling class depending on the 
the armies at the time that held Jerusalem and held this particular region, they simply, in their love for the land and the fact that these armies needed to be fed, they became the peasant class, the agrarian uh, agronomists, the agriculturalists who continue to raise their crops and to take care of their families in a desire to stay on this land. See, sometimes you just have to hear it from the horse's mouth. As you see, the Afro-Palestinians attest that their people were took down to Africa and sold to America, confirming everything that we've discussed. is a white woman jack a lot of israelis look like palestinians and a lot of palestinians look like israelis press one i'm starting to notice that a lot of israelis look like palestinians and a lot of palestinians look like israelis i'm starting to notice that man Everything. If you got a YouTube link, man, send it to me. Um, put it in the back chat. Well, I I, I ain't dropped the link yet, but send it to me via um Akintunde Live Two at Gmail dot com. Akintunde Live Two at Gmail dot com. Be human, stand with Palestine. So all you people that want me to jump out there and be like, oh, I'm supporting. Listen, man, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. If, if the Juice Crew stays in power... Would that be bad for blacks? Would that be bad for women? Would that be bad for LGBT? I seen LGBT for <laughs> LGBT for Palestine, man. <laughs> Who saw that, man? LGBT. <laughs> LGBT for Palestine. <laughs> Like yo, do you you don't under you don't know you don't know the people really? Joining me now is that incorrigible Texan himself. He is an AOC fanboy and comic, Alex Stein. Alex, you have been, frankly, out of control in recent days. I'm worried that I'm going to have to start some sort of a GoFundMe in the near future to bail you out of jail. Let's just have a look at some of your recent antics. Here you are mocking the suicidal idiocy of LGBT activists who protests for Palestine, a place where they wouldn't last five minutes. Here you present your case to Plano Council in Texas. I'm here representing Gays for Palestine. We're an organization representing the 2SL LGBTQIA plus community that stands with the persecuted Muslims who just want a jihad in peace, all right? So 
A lot of people are rushing to judgment against the Palestinians right now because of the stuff they are seeing on TV. I just want to say a lot of people have misconceptions about Palestine. Mia Khalifa, one of the most popular porn stars in America, who has done a bunch of lesbian scenes, is standing with the Palestinians. And just because they've thrown a few of my allies off of roofs in the past, that doesn't make them bad people. We must look past that because, you know, this is 2024. Palestine is changing. And just because gay people have had to run to Israel for protection in the past doesn't mean anything. We love that their women have very little rights. That's why they have such few traffic accidents. So we agree on more than you think. <laughs> Palestine is on. <laughs> oh, oh, shout out to Road Ghost 1969, man. This way in the gay direction. Alex, I have a, a lot of questions, but first let's not miss out on this song you wrote for the occasion. I'll say it one more time. All the gays of Palestine, all the gays of Palestine, all the gays of Palestine. <laughs> That's the um, only section of the song that we could play, Alex. Please explain yourself. Well, Rita, you know that I'm insane and that I'm crazy, but what I do is called culture jamming. Like I take the most absurd parts of our culture and I try to jam it in people's faces to bring awareness to it. And there's nothing more hypocritical in this entire world than seeing the LGBTQ community coming out in support of Hamas, basically. I mean, you would think that this was a joke written by <laughs> queers for Palestine. Yo, man. This is why you don't just always jump out, man. That's why you don't always jump out the window, man, on things, man. Um, you know, don't just always jump out the window. Don't always jump out the window, man. <laughs> Try to like, you know what I'm saying? Try to like, just be cool, man. Take it easy sometime, man. Um, you don't have to jump out the window every time something happens, man. <clears throat> it actually shows, it actually shows a lack of, um, a lack of um, fortitude and patience and a lack of power to just jump on every train that comes by man um you don't want to jump on every train that comes down pause um sometimes you want to you know in, in investigate things man inspect things see if you're doing the right thing man You don't always have to um, be the first one. Hey, I'm first. Here's my take. I'm first. I'm the first one. This is my take. I'm first. I beat you there. Here's my take. I'm first. You don't have to do that. You can wait. Cause these Jew these 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 queers, man, they gonna end up looking stupid. Cause let me just show you something, for instance, man. 
Let me just show you how chain of effects, unexpected things, man. Salute to Jim Sefton, man, Op Nation Hall of Famer from across the pond. Let me just show you this, show you something, how, how, how there's a cause and effect, right? So in my day, right, when I was a kid, when I was coming up, yeah, we did. We, we bonked white people upside the head and took their money. But carjackings weren't like a big thing. Carjackings happened, but they weren't a big thing. Every like, if you go in a black hood right now, you 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 may not find too many kids that haven't at least driven in a been went on a mission. They might not have actually pulled the person out of a car. But have like you know been on a mission to get a car in a carjacking manner. A lot of the kids have done that, and carjacking is out of control now. And it's more reasons. It's a more complex thing, you know. A lot of anti theft devices in these cars now, so you kind of like have to get the um the key from the person. You can't really like just get a screwdriver and pop the ignition and shit like that, but you still have Kias, which is actually easier to steal. But you still have carjacking, even though you have the Kia, the Kia, um, the Kia um, hat, where you can just use the USB cord. You still have a bunch of carjackers, even though you have that Kia hat. But in my day, teens weren't. I never knew nobody say, "Hey, man, let's go carjack a car." I knew guys that said they wanted to steal a car, but I never knew guys that said, "Let's go carjack some people, man." Um, so in 1992, Congress, in the aftermath of a spate of violent carjackings, including some in which the victims were murdered, passed the Federal Anti-Car Theft Act of 1992, FACTA, the first federal carjacking law making it a federal crime punishable by 15 years to life imprisonment to use a firearm to steal a car, okay? So this law is no longer... It's no longer, um, it's no longer, um, obviously, you guys know that. This law is no longer enforced, right? They no longer enforce this, this, this law. But when they stopped enforcing this law, I promise you, I know y'all say the evil Illuminati is trying to, like, cause chaos. I promise you. When they stopped enforcing this law, when they got rid of this law because it's racist, and this is before, this is 1992, this is before mass incarceration, and this is before the Biden crime bill. This is before the Biden crime bill. This is two years before the Biden crime bill. Because of too many carjackings, 15 to life. 15 to life. They did not know when they got rid of this that Sun Words was going to just take carjacking to a new level. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful. You take this step, you got to know what's going to come next, man. You got to analyze what's going to come next. What could possibly come next? Salute to Boy Kachina says he's funny. You know what isn't funny? Worship of demonic idols, taboo sexual acts, and sacrifice of children. Canaanites be damned. Praise Ah. Shout out to Boy Kachina, man. Boy Kachina getting deep, man. When this law, and kids on the street knew this law, I was around at this time. Everyone knew that carjacking carried 15 to life. Everyone knew that.
okay? So they stayed away from it. And I'm not saying that it never happened. Kids stole cars in those days. They didn't jack them. They stole them. They stole cars in those days. They didn't jack them. Kids stole cars in those days. This dude's just coming home who carjacked somebody in 1992. Their dude's just, just coming home. These guys are just coming home now from carjacking somebody in 1992 or 98 or 2000. But along the way, they stopped enforcing this because it was racist. It was racist, man. And when you stopped enforcing this, look what you have. Look at one of the things you have now. Carjacking's out of control. So you got to be careful, man. I get Palestine and Hamas. It's the big thing now. To say you support that. Be careful what you ask for. Be 